Yo, 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 what up, y'all? Tight shirt, Terry Warfield, back for another video. Hey, I hope you're having a great day so far. Hey, remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that on with the meat and potatoes. I know why you clicked on this video. You want to know why you should still buy the Sony A7S III instead of the Sony FX3. Now, let me just say this. First of all, I don't script videos. Second of all, you can't go wrong with either one of these cameras. Essentially, they're the same camera at the core, and if you can't get results out of either of them, you're just a bum. So now that we got that out the way, I actually do have some reservations about these two cameras. Although I love them both, I think there's reasons why you should still pick the a7s3 and trust me there will be a follow-on video on reasons why you should pick the fx3 so let's start with the first one and that is cost the a7s3 is 34.99 the fx3 is 38.99 400 difference and for a lot of y'all the difference is uh not really something that you need because pretty much you're paying for k3m module now right now i can't show it to you because it's on my a7 IV, but that's essentially what you're paying for the k3m module by itself is 600 bucks so you're getting a discounted kind of module with the fx3 but you don't get a microphone with the audio module whereas if you buy the k3m separate you do get it so you're paying 400 bucks extra for the fx3 for pretty much the same exact camera inside the outside is different it's got a few extra features like tally lights and a few extra things that like cinema wise but essentially that's what you're paying for the same camera and a different body that's geared a little bit more towards filmmaking and stuff like that but if you don't plan on putting a strong emphasis on professional audio or anything like that you can save yourself 400 bucks to go with the a7s3 it is every bit just as good as the fx3 it's just kind of geared towards hybrids versus kind of just towards video so that's the first reason is cost now the second reason that you should pick up the sony a7s3 is for the electronic viewfinder the evf if you've never seen the evf in the sony a7s3 it's like looking into like a window in the heaven it is that freaking crystal clear it's like nine point some odd million pixels and it is amazing now i know a lot of you film snobs are going to be like oh i don't care about the evf i'm always using the external monitor and that's fine but some of us don't like rigging up external monitors every time we want to go outside and film so i do take a lot of pictures and honestly the evf was the main thing preventing me from switching to a uh, fx3 both of these take amazing photos but having an evf on this camera is so much better if you're taking pictures and also in situations where you might be outside and it's super bright and you didn't bring a monitor being able to still look through this crystal clear window right here and get an accurate reading of your exposure how the frame looks and all that stuff in situations where you can't see the flip out screen is clutch now the third reason is ergonomics these are shaped very very similar if you look at them the only thing is the fx3 is a little bit thicker because it has a fan also the fx3 is kind of like a more gray color to fall in line with the quote unquote cinema series and this is traditional style dslr or mirrorless now i'm gonna be honest ergonomics wise i actually still prefer the a7s3 and maybe it's because i'm just so used to mirrorless and dslr style bodies but i really like the ergonomics on the a7s3 versus the fx3 for a few reasons number one it's like i said traditional i'm so used to it but number two i prefer where the buttons and stuff lay on the sony a7s3 the fx3 does have buttons and all that crap on it but they're kind of already pre-labeled for stuff like iris and iso and stuff like that whereas on the a7s3 there's buttons everywhere too and you can still customize the fx3 don't get me wrong but i prefer the layout on the a7s3 plus the a7s3 has a top dial and that is huge for people that switch back and forth between photos and videos all the time and it also has this dial right here with a lock on it so you can assign that to like volume like i have it or exposure compensation or whatever and the other thing i don't like about the fx3 is where the power switch is now typically sony cameras have the power switch like on the front right there where the fx3 does not have that it's on the back of the camera where the menu is and i find myself always reaching for the switch when i'm trying to hit the menu button whereas on the a7s3 it's structured or built just like every other sony camera the menu is right there and i really like that 
the next reason why you should pick the A7S III over the FX3 is because the FX3 no longer has S-Log2. I know a lot of y'all still prefer S-Log2, I don't know why, over S-Log3, but there's some of y'all out there where the FX3 no longer has S-Log2, Sony ditched it in favor of S-Log3 and sent it EI. A7S III still has S-Log2, still has S-Log3, but there's no Senna EI modes on this camera that is all suited for the FX3, but if that's something that's important to you, that's another reason why you should get the a7s3 the last reason i have and i'm sorry i'm kind of reaching for <laughs> reasons because realistically the fx3 has everything the a7s3 has minus the evf but the last thing is potentially i don't really know this but it's all theory the fx3 does have a fan which is great because the a7s3 does not have a fan i mean it, it's not like it really overheats but it does have a fan but this is weather seal and you can trust the weather sealing on this camera. Well, this is weather sealed also, but there's a slot here for the fan exhaust to come out of. So potentially this may be a point that water or moisture could get into. I don't know. Again, that's pure theory. But those are reasons why you should get an A7S III. Again, you cannot go wrong with either of these cameras. And if you can't get good results out of them, you just suck. But the other thing, Sony, is both of these are video-centric cameras. Why do we not have the video features at the time of recording this video that the A7 IV has there's still no focus breathing compensation there's still no variable shutter and why can't we have things especially in the fx3 even with version 2 firmware why don't we have things like shutter angle or like dci 4k or freaking vectors or waveforms that we could put on the screen come on sony i love y'all but y'all got to get it together anyways i hope this video was helpful and let you know why you should choose a7s3 over the fx3 stay tuned for the next video because i got reasons why you should pick the fx3 over the a7s3 although you can't go wrong with either so until until next time, I'm out of here. Peace and chicken grease, Terry Warfield. Peace.